Hello again, Fizzles family and friends. This is the daily pastoral message for Thursday, July 23rd. I'm recording it fairly late in the day. Uh, it's still got a little bit of daylight outside, although it's getting dark because it's going to be raining again. I'm recording late because I was in a meeting from 10 this morning that lasted till 6, and so I needed a little bit of downtime afterwards to unwind. But uh, here we are for our daily message. I'm coming out of the UCC daily devotional again. This is the devotional for today. The author is Chris Mearshuk, and Chris is an author who uh, wrote the book called Hard and Holy Devotionals, Devotions for Parents, or Hard and Holy Devotions for Parenting. It's a collection of devotionals for the spiritual practice of raising, teaching, learning from, delighting in, and cleaning up after children. And so... This is his devotion for today. His, uh, it's called Test Everything, and his the, uh, scriptural verse is 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 21. Test everything, hold fast to what is good. And here is his devotion on that verse. My daughter is the total skeptic variety of PK, pastor's kid. Not interested in church, not inclined to simply accept what she is being taught or what her father is preaching about. Once she asked me about the Holy Spirit, and I brought her to the window to point out the swaying trees, attempting some poetic apologetics. Ah, the Holy Spirit is like the wind. We can feel the wind. We can observe how it moves the trees, but we can't see the wind itself. Yada, yada. I was greatly impressed with my object lesson. She was unconvinced. Same with the bedtime Bible lessons. While her skepticism sometimes makes me question if I'm really any good at my job as a pastor, I am encouraged by her instinct to test everything she reads, hears, and experiences because it seems to be leading her to find deeper meaning. She doesn't enjoy coming to worship, but she knows church is a place where many different people love each other. She doesn't believe in healing miracles, but she knows we must help people who are sick and hurting. She doesn't believe in the feeding miracles, but she knows we need to help people who are hungry, and she knows it's wrong that there is hunger. She doesn't believe that God literally created humans in God's image but she knows every person is worthy of dignity and love. Yes, there are times that I kind of wish she'd simply accept my lessons without question, but that's about me and not her. She is testing everything, and she is holding fast to what is good. And that sounds a lot like the faith and discipleship that I pray for. In Chris's prayer, Holy One, Guide us in our questions and doubts, and help us to hold fast to what is good and true. Amen. So, a lesson in some humility for pastors that what we teach may not be accepted at face value, but for a parent to see their child growing up to question reality, question the nature of things, and to seek how things can be better, whether it's by helping people who are sick, feeding people who are hungry, and working to end hunger, accepting people as they are with love and dignity. I think Chris is probably pretty proud of his daughter, and we should be able to strive to have those questioning minds. God says, uh, Jesus said to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Mind is there. We're not supposed to shut our minds off. We're supposed to ask the hard questions because God can stand up to the hard questions. And so, yes, ask those hard questions that help ground our faith because God can stand up to our questions. Let us pray. Holy God, whose mysteries are beyond our knowing. We thank you for giving us inquisitive minds, minds that can ask the hard questions, and that 
when we turn to you, we can find answers that sustain us and feed us, whether it be in traditional theology or just knowing that we are grounded in love and that your love is greater than anything else in all of the universe. For you are love itself and Jesus is love incarnate. Lord, we continue to pray for all those affected in this time of pandemic. Heal those who are sick. Comfort those who mourn. Encourage and strengthen those who are anxious or depressed. And strengthen and protect those providing needed services and especially those providing care for those who are affected. All these things we ask in the name of your Son, who is the Word incarnate, who is love incarnate, Jesus Christ. Amen. I look forward to coming to you again tomorrow with a daily message. And also, in today's email, and for now, I realized that last night when I gave the survey results, I didn't really say what the council did with the survey. And so, given that there was sort of a two peaks to the survey, some people thought we were ready to, or should be ready to, start indoor worship and other folks were still very hesitant and with the rising cases and the new guidelines to have no more than 25 people together for an indoor gathering we decided to as much as possible continue our outdoor worship between now and our next council meeting which will be in just three Sundays away. So we'll hopefully be blessed with the good weather that we've been having the plan is, if there is rain or rain appears imminent, to cancel the live worship. Uh, folks can call the church office number and Linda will have a message to say whether church is canceled or not. And then I will film on Sunday morning a video worship which I'll post so people can worship sometime during the day once I have a chance to get it uploaded. Uh, sometime during the day on Sunday. If it's very hot, we'll still plan on having outdoor worship for these three weeks, but please use your own discretion on whether you think it's too hot for you to be out uh, outside in the weather. Obviously, as we're worshiping, there's plenty of shade around. Hopefully, like this past Sunday, there'll be a cool breeze, even if the general temperature is hot, but please use your own best judgment. So, pleasant weather outside, hot weather outside, realizing that some people may decide it's too hot, rainy weather, we'll have a video worship. So I look forward to speaking with you uh, again tomorrow and then also on Saturday and then on Sunday hopefully if we're blessed with good weather uh, seeing you for live worship outdoors. Until we speak again stay safe, stay healthy, stay strong and I know that God is continuing to bless us all. Goodbye for now.